Hi guys, this is Ricky, and here is some great news. You've probably already heard, but iNav 3.0 dropped about five days ago. So watch this. All the iNav 3.0 goodness talks about things that they did, talks about how to upgrade from 2.6, and this was what I was the most interested in support natively for my Flywoo F411 version 2. So when you fire up iNav, get your controller into DFU mode, go to the firmware flasher, find your board. Now I know Flywoo was putting different boards in there, but this is the version 2, this is the one that I happen to have. And then there it is, 3.0, so you don't have to go to GitHub or, or or find a fantastic developer that made a, a custom firmware just for this one. Then you load the firmware online and flash it. This is a quick little update on the changes that I have made to my Flywoo Explorer version 2. Um, a huge shout out to the iNav developers and the people at Flywoo because iNav 3.0 now supports the board that was on there. So you don't have to get a, um, a hex file that, that somebody made. It is now natively supported in iNav 3.0. Another change that I made is I switched from these little Spectrum 4650 receivers to the Crossfire receiver. So I have a little crossfire receiver in here. Um, one of the reasons I did that was, um, you know, to get increased range and um, full telemetry. So, speaking of that, this has been my daily driver for the past six years. I got it in 2015. This is a fantastic radio. But one thing that it was missing was the module bay in the back um, so I could easily install Crossfire. I know you can get the um, the Crossfire module, the big one, and plug that in, but the DX18 never got that um, native support um, for it like the DX9 did. So, enter my new radio. Now, I don't know if this is going to be the daily driver for me, but for my iNav quads, I think this is what um, I'm going to do. So I have Crossfire, I have the module in the back, but one of the reasons that I got this particular radio was for this feature right here. So this is an uh, iNav Lua script, and all of my telemetry data um, comes from here and it shows up on this beautiful looking screen. So I have all of my um, artificial horizon, I see all my battery levels, I can see um, my VTX stuff, um, everything that's really neat. So I'll put a battery on this and uh, I'll let you see what it looks like. Okay, I have a battery plugged in. GPS, good. So, you see Ready to fly. all Ready of this to fly. stuff. And then you heard that I had the beeper in there, so I know when I have enough satellites. I have 15 here. It shows that I got 15. My VTX is running at 25 milliwatts. When I move the quad left and right, you can see that the artificial horizon matches the same that I have on my transmitter. I get my RSSI stuff, my battery voltage. Um, I'm facing north, but if I turn to the left, now I'm facing west. If I look south, now I'm facing south. or east and then back to north so the compass works really well um, this is just a really really cool feature 
Um, again, huge shout out to the developers for this uh, iNav Lewis script. And let's try a flight here in a little bit. Another cool feature about iNav 3.0 I was looking forward for was the mission control. Before, I would always had to go into a Linux virtual box to do all of my missions, but now I can go to mission control. I can put my waypoints like I normally do. Usually I make like a little square. Get them kind of how you want them. If you click on one, you can tell how high you want it to be. Um, choose your speed, but one of the things that I like is this jump command. There's other things that you can do also, but I like the jump, and it says, hey, I'm going to jump, and I'm going to go back to point number one zero times. Well, you can do this five times, and you're going to see your distance, how long it's going to take for it to make this route five times. If you put in negative one, if you look right here, it says it's going to do this infinitely, so it's going to do this until you run out of battery. This is the one that I usually like to do. Or you can pick and you can have it jump to point number two. So now it's going to run this mission and then jump this way. So that's really, really neat feature. Okay, I have my flight controller plugged in. I am going to load the mission that I made. Then I'm going to click open. So now I have my mission. I have it at 25 meters, going 650 centimeters a second. That is about 14 and a half miles an hour. So I think that's that's plenty fast. Let's see if that does that. Then I am going to Let's see, not this one. I'm going to save the EEPROM mission. So I'm going to save it from here to my Flywheel Explorer. So I click that, it says save, and then that way when I unplug the flight controller from power, the mission is still stored, and I'll be able to load it when I get out to the track. All right, took off in position hold mode. Have my radio on there. Looks like it's doing okay. It dropped a little bit of altitude there, but it looks like it's stabilizing. It figured out what it's doing. All right, it seemed to do position hold pretty good or I mean as good can be expected it didn't drop that much altitude so I thought that I would just fly it around a little in acro I'm not the best pilot by any means um, this is still just the stock PIDs I really have never auto-tuned this quad um, I got some of the values from the original beta flight settings and I tried to find the ones that would match in iNav you can see I you know I, I over over rolled that roll but it still does really good I can't fly it good enough to test if I'm gonna get jitters or anything but just me flying around I think it does fantastic um, here I'm testing return to home and because I have a that new radio the switch on it is a is a spring switch so I wasn't able to video this because I'm having to hold the switch down but it did a good job it came back as close as it normally does and as soon as it lands I will try um, a waypoint mission alright let's try a mission 
by doing the stick command to load the mission I had earlier. Ready to fly. So now that I got the mission loaded, I'm going to arm the motors. I'm going to flip into waypoint mode. Okay, full disclosure before I start the mission. I did a video a couple of weeks about a Mavic Mini doing missions. And on it, it can take off from the ground. This, after the mission loaded, and I flip into waypoint mode, it goes crazy. Look at it. It just shoots like a rocket straight to the first waypoint. I am so fortunate that nothing bad happened. What I should have done is taken off, put it in position hold, and then started the waypoint mission. But live and learn. I'm bearing 292, elevation 82, voltage 11.4, 19 satellites. Heading 344, range 383, bearing 246, elevation 82. Voltage 11.2, 20 satellites. Heading 162, range 272, bearing 292, elevation 82. Voltage 11.2, 20 satellites, 1 minute. Heading 345, range 380, bearing 254, elevation 82, voltage 11, 20 satellites. Heading 163, range 229, bearing 273, elevation 82. Voltage 11.1, 20 satellites. Heading 344, range 380, bearing 270, elevation 82. Voltage 11, 20 satellites, 2 minutes. Heading 243, range 216, bearing 241, elevation 82, voltage 11, 20 satellites, 19 satellites. Heading 81, range 406, bearing 281, elevation 82. Voltage 10.9, 21 satellites. Heading 257, range 262, bearing 244. Pilot has control, position hold, elevation 78. Voltage 10.9, 3 minutes, 20 satellites, 21 satellites. Heading 201, range 200, bearing 212, elevation 75. Voltage 11, 22 satellites. Heading 114, range 9, bearing 221, elevation 3, voltage 10.9, 